In this video, I want to show you how to create a better sounding, more resonant speaking voice with an incredibly simple exercise. And if you watch to the end, it's going to be a couple of minutes if I just stop rattling on for a minute, two minute video. There's a bonus tip at the end, very, very exciting. I had just thought about it as I was doing my rehearsal take. So I've just put this in for you, stick to the end. My name is Jimmy Cannon, I am a speaking coach and I help people who aren't necessarily comfortable in their voice deliver their message with more authenticity. So consider subscribing and commenting, don't even consider it, subscribe and then comment once you've watched the video, let me know how you get on with the exercises. Let me know also if you have any issues with either anxiety before you speak or speaking itself. So this is a really, really common thing that I see people or hear people do all the time. And they're simply, especially on Zoom calls, Zoom meetings, etc on the camera their jaw is dropped or their jaw is high it really makes a difference to the sound now if i count from one to five in a normal position one two three four five now if i do the same thing but i lower my jaw one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five now obviously the microphone's picking up easier if i'm like this however i think you can hear there's quite a measurable difference between speaking like this you're bunching the vocal folds up you're contracting the larynx. You're not allowing the phonation to be efficient. So what happens physiologically is that the air comes from the lungs, it resonates in the vocal folds here, it then comes up through the vocal tract into the oral cavity and bounces off the hard palate at the top of your mouth and then comes out of your mouth. So if you're doing this, it's stopping that flow, it's stopping the flow of air. If I bring my head up, it's really helping to create more flow and an efficiency of airflow and air pressure, which is what you want for good normal speaking. So just simply make sure that your head isn't too far up and it's not too far down. That's really important when you're presenting, when you're speaking. Can you hear the difference? Great. Let me know how you get on with that. Part two is, and I just thought about this because my last video, if you look at my last video, ping, about breathing into the space. I'm really excited about that, it's a great video. And you'll notice I'm wearing the same top because I've bunched up the two videos because I got really, I got in a roll. I just, I was on a roll, let's do the other video now. Save me time to concentrate on helping more people like you. Anyway, part two is a similar thing, but actually what I want you to do is blow hot air into your hand like this. Hopefully not too hot, should be just warm air and then cool air. Now you'll notice, hopefully, that the cool air, the vocal tract is narrower, and when you open up the throat to make it wider, you produce warm air. We want to be producing warm air when we're speaking. It's gonna enable you to be able to create much more variety in color and tone of your voice. So don't forget, warm air, as you're speaking. So you can do that as a start off with a breathy onset. I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak like this. Just practice I'm or different vowels. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm Orkney, Orkney. I don't know where I got that from. Orkney, hallelujah. And then start thinking about making a really open throat when you're speaking. It's going to give you a warmer, more empathic, more engaging sounding voice, which is ultimately what we want to achieve. Speak soon. <laughs>